Hello everybody, welcome along to this video. Mr Johnson teaches Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 5, part of my quick revision series. If you've been watching that series, you might notice a slight change on this slide, which is an extra picture, which I'm going to refer to a little bit later. It comes as part of this scene. It's a really key scene. It's the first time we meet Lady Macbeth, and it's got lots of great quotes you want to use your exam. So definitely worth watching this video through and catching up on some of the bits that you may have forgotten. So with that in mind, let's move on. And a summary of the scene for you then. So it starts off with Lady Macbeth. She's reading a letter from her husband about the witch's prophecies because he's been off at battle and he's written this letter to her telling her what's gone on. She's really excited but she fears he's too good to do what it takes to become king. Macbeth then arrives and they receive news that the king is going to stay at their castle tonight to which Lady Macbeth says they will kill him while he sleeps. Key characters, it's only these two in this scene. It's the first time we see them together as well. So, uh, yep, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth are your characters here. And here goes the scene then. At one scene five, it says at the top, this is Inverness, which is Macbeth's castle. And Lady Macbeth is reading the letter from her husband. So she talks about the, the witch's predictions there in like lines two and three. Um, and talks about how they vanished. And whilst I stood wrapped in the wand of it, came missives from the king, like came a message from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cawdor. So basically, Mabeth is reporting back to her quite literally what uh, what we already know. Um, but the Thane of Cawdor, um, which these weird sisters saluted me, it says there on line eight, referred to me on the coming of time with hail king that shalt be. But he tells her then in the middle there of how the prophecy came true, but also that line on line 10, Hail King that shalt be, he's really excited about the prediction of him becoming king. He talks about my dearest partner of greatness just after that, um, and talks about rejoicing. And then near the bottom there about the greatness that's promised to thee, like you will also receive great things, my love, because of course she is uh, his wife. Now, this is where Lady Macbeth puts down the letter and starts talking to... Well, it's a bit of a soliloquy we've got going on there where she is the only character on stage, so she's speaking her thoughts so we can hear what she plans. She says about Glams thou art, so you are already Thane of Glams and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised, so you shall be king yet. And here comes a bit in pink, which means it's a really good quote for you to write down somewhere. I do fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. As I've put there, she fears Macbeth is too good to commit the murder of the king, to be full of the milk of human kindness. Milk being something that is nurturing, which is kind, which is good for you. And you're, he's too full of those things to catch the nearest way. She goes on to say, thou wouldst be great. You are not without ambition, but you haven't got the illness that should attend it, which is a really interesting description of it. The fact that you need to have like this illness, this darkness almost is being compared to an illness. Um, and then she goes on to talk about all the sort of darkness and the fact you would need to play false to get these things. She gets, she goes on in line 26, a bit further down, to talk about hide thee hither, like come to me now, so I can pour my spirits in thine ear, which I think is a really interesting description because already Macbeth, excuse me, Lady Macbeth is using language which you associate with darkness and evil, like the idea of spirits. Um, and chastise with the valour of my tongue. So get rid, with by using my words, my tongue, everything that impedes thee, she says, everything which stands in your, your way from the golden round, which is everything that prevents him taking the crown, which is the golden round, if you think about the shape of a base of a crown there. Um, and then enter a messenger, in comes a messenger, to tell her that the king uh, is coming here tonight, and, you know, uh, wh where's your master? Where's Macbeth? Um, he's on his way, basically, she says. He, he, the messenger says, he's moved really quickly. And off goes the messenger. And now Lady Macbeth is alone again. And this again is where, as you can see from the pink there, where we get some really great quotes of her, showing her like, evil side and her evil intentions. She talks about a raven, for example. A raven being a bird which is often associated with death. Uh, talking about the entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Now, look here, I've highlighted in yellow the imperatives, but also the repetition of come, 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 like almost like it's a spell, the fact she repeats it again and again, which once again almost mirrors the uh, the witches and their chanting. She talks of the spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. She says, unsex me here, remove any uh, feminine qualities that make me pure and gentle. She wants to be a dark person and really be able to do these evil deeds. And she goes on to say on that line, fill me from the crown, like my head to my toe, full of direst cruelty. 
like the worst sort of cruelty fill me with that she says make thick my blood she wants to remove anything which is kindness and nice in line 45 she's got the imperative stop up this and she goes on to talk and talk about these sorts of evil and darkness the next bit of pink there come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall which means take my uh, take my milk, which would normally nurture a child, but turn it into gall, which is poison. And she uses that alliteration there, the murdering ministers, a minister being something like which does the work of the devil. So these murdering ministers come to my breast and take my milk for gall. It's really quite violent and horrible and dark. And it really t like instantly Lady Macbeth has been on stage for a short time. We've got a very good idea of the sort of character she is. She goes on to say on line 51, come thick night and pull thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, like wrap you up in a funeral cloak in the darkest, thickest smoke of hell. There really are loads of references to evil here. And as I've said, we really do see how dark her thoughts are in this soliloquy, which is what this is. Uh, in comes Macbeth and she says to him, great glams, the worthy corridor and everything, you know, that's still to come. Uh, your letters have sort of moved me beyond where I am now. And she sort of feels the future in her hands. Uh, Macbeth tells her Duncan comes here tonight. She asks him, when does he leave? Tomorrow, says Macbeth. And then she goes to say these lines. Already she's made up her mind and has the plan in action. She says, oh, never shall sun that morrow see. As in, he shall never see the sun again and wake up because he's going to be murdered by us. And then she goes on to say on that next line, line 64. Your face, my thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. Like your face is giving you away. You can almost be read like you can read a book. You can read your face. To beguile the time, to trick the time, look like it. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. So make everything look like you're being welcoming. But then that pink bit, which another really good quote for Lady Macbeth, which we'll look at properly in a minute. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Real deception there. And as I put there, the theme of deception and duplicity going on there. Macbeth says we'll speak further, and then she says uh, basically leave the rest to me. It already seems like she's taking control of this situation. The key themes to look at here, well, we've got evil, there's deception and duplicity. The evil, I should say, you know, all the things that Lady Macbeth was saying, conjuring up murdering ministers and spirits. Deception and duplicity, like that line of look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. But also gender roles start coming up here as well. The fact that she appears to be in control um, and taking control of the situation and almost wants to remove her own femininity brings the idea of gender into this scene. Some quick revision questions there which you could pause. They are sort of generally retrieval questions that mean that you need to just go back through that scene and uh, find the answers. I have given you the answers to those questions as I talked through this video. Question, the bigger question to consider there is who is actually in control of this scene? And I put there in the bullet point, how would a Jacobean audience who had been watching it at the time react to these two characters? And then just to finish, really, talking to you about temptation in the Bible, Lady Macbeth says, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. And she doesn't use the word snake. Serpent is used. And serpent carries with it really important connotations. A serpent would draw the audience's mind at that time to the serpent in the story of Adam and Eve. It's the serpent who was basically the devil and the devil tempted Adam and Eve into taking the forbidden fruit from a tree. They were in Eden. They were allowed. God said you can eat any fruit, but do not eat fruit from this tree. The devil tempted them into taking the fruit, as you see in that image on the right, and the forbidden fruit, and then they were cast out of Eden and thrown down to earth. And in many ways, that's what we've got here. The forbidden fruit is the idea of being king, something they shouldn't be because the king is chosen by God. And yet they are tempted by it. And Lady Macbeth is actually almost talking about this idea of uh, being a serpent, actually almost conjuring up again these dark images and these dark ideas. So there you go. Act one, scene five, uh, quite a long scene, a very important scene with lots of great quotes, particularly setting up the character of Lady Macbeth. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, check out some of my other ones in this series and I wish you the very best of luck when it comes to your exams. Goodbye.